strongly believe that we all need, a, we all need to use our experiences to affect our surroundings in a positive way. I say this because I'll share with you right now where I started and how I get to this point. The interesting thing is that I come from a beautiful country called Swaziland, the land of kings and queens, rich heritage and culture. And we're known for being the pulpit of Africa. So I had the privilege of being educated in an international school in Swaziland. So I had a, a lot of people that I was exposed to from all over the world. So I had a global out, outlook on life. So now when I think about it, I had ambition, I had drive, the sky was not even the limit. And yet I was in a, an environment that was a bit slow on the progress side, small country, there's about 1.3 million people in Swaziland. 60% of those are the youth. So as a young person growing up in Swaziland, you kind of try and figure out, what am I going to do here? So you realize, OK, I need to get an education. So I did that. But before I even did that, I was always a creative. That started my leavers year when I made my dress. And I liked it. But I had no choice. I'm short. When I go into short shops, none of the clothes fit me. And so I decided I'm going to make my own dress. And when I did that, so every occasion I went to, I'd make my own outfits. And then people would start asking, who made your dress? And like I did. And then they started getting me to design dresses for them, which I enjoyed. I loved being a creative. Back at the ranch, the folks said, nope, you need to go study something serious. And that means your accountant, your lawyer. But fortunately for me, I had a mother who was a businesswoman. So was my grandfather. So then I decided I'm going to go study business because one day I'm going to own a business. And that's what I did. I finished my studies, and then I come back to Swaziland. And I'm like, OK, what am I going to do now? And then I realize, OK, the folks are like, go get a job. You know? And I'm thinking, OK. I look for that job, and I look for a job. It doesn't seem to come. Then I remember I have this passion. So let me explore it. So I carried on doing that. Um, actually, I first went into a job. And then after a number of years, I realized it wasn't working. But on the side, I've always done the clothing. It was a hobby. And then so I had an opportunity to go work in a factory. And in that factory, I was learning. It was a clothing factory, so I learned how to run a factory. And I was like, yay, finally, it's happening. And then I then um, realized that for me to actually start my own business and run a factory, I'd need a lot of money. I tried to find funding, and no one would fund a young person to start a factory. Are you crazy? None of the Swazis own the factories in Swaziland, in case you didn't know that. So that's like, no, that's not going to happen. So then I realized, OK, I need to start working backwards. So I became a designer. And the nice thing about it is that when I started designing, and I think I was privileged in a way, is that I entered a business competition. So I got a bit of money, but they only bought you like the assets and things you needed. You didn't get hard cash. So then my first show was at an international fest festival, sorry, where I, I had people from all over the world coming and to this festival. So they, had, they didn't know me. They know, knew nothing about me. So whatever impression they had of my clothes, that's the feedback I got. And then I, I also thought, OK, it's visitors. So I then made it a point to um, make clothing that was African inspired and that took off. And I realized there's no one doing this here in a creative way where we could wear it day to day. It's all traditional it's stuff we wouldn't wear. So I want to make cool clothes. So I did that, and then I started looking at what are my opportunities here? Can I get funding? Can I get? It was just very difficult to start a business. And the nice thing about it, though, is that I had that drive and resolve that I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a difference. I came here to make a difference. And then after trying for a while to figure out what I'm going to do, and you must also understand that you come where your family I mean, my parents, bless their hearts, worked hard, 
to afford me the education I have, and they sacrificed. And then so because of their, the sum total of their own experiences, they could take, only take you so far in terms of guiding and nurturing you or taking you to the next level in your life or business. They also had their own challenges. So you now are looking around for people to help, for people to assist in any way. So what did this mean in this environment? I couldn't innovate in isolation. So I had to figure out who do I get, how do I get others to join me well, in this quest to make this environment conducive for business, for young people. And then I realized as well that, OK, we need to actually, as, we're, as I'm growing as a business, I need to teach and at the same, same time learn. So when I started my business, let me just go back a couple of steps. Because of the challenges I was facing, I called my business Zubani. Zubani is a word in Siswati that instructs two or more people to jump. So I was like dedicated to all the procrastinators, all the people who are just delaying to start their dreams. So I'm like, let's do this. Let's jump, let's do this. And so then getting back to, I'm trying to figure out what are my next steps. I cannot innovate in isolation. As I'm learning as well, I need to teach. I'm not a trained designer. I studied business. And at the same time, we need to build the structures and the support systems for ourselves. We need to change the mindset in the environment that we're in. And we need to figure out how we're going to do skills, training, development, and all the things that we require, because you need a workforce. And at the same time, we need to affect the policies so we're able to um, work in this environment and have opportunities. So there was a lot of things that were challenging. But we, I still have the resolve that we can solve these challenges. But then again, what does it mean for my business? What does it mean for me as a designer? Then I realized that that meant that my business would not grow as fast as other businesses. It would have a very slow growth rate because of all the things that I need to do. And then at the same time, I realized that, OK, it will take a while for me to realize my full potential, my dreams, all the things that I want to do. So stunted growth. And then came the fact that we need people. We need the support. We need to build capacity. We need to find a way to network or find strategic people in strategic positions to help us on our journey as young business people. And then I also realized that, OK, what are we going to do? What needs to be done? So now I'm working on those challenges, and I'm advocating for the youth to come together and try and fix these challenges. And how do we inspire young people who are not feeling inspired? And you also need to understand that Swazis, we have never really struggled. We're a peaceful nation. We're a humble people known for being humble. And we have land, we can farm, we can eat. So the question is, is it perhaps um, that we're comfortable? What do we need to do to start moving towards building this environment that is conducive for young people to strive to achieve the goals? What support systems do we need to build? And that's where I am right now. And so I'm speaking to all of you to help us help each other and figure out how we can unite, how we can make dreams possible, how we can give opportunities to those that feel like there are no opportunities, how we can all work as a team and innovate. And that's how I became the reluctant innovator. Thank you. <laughs>